we now start our discussion on module 1 of chapter 2. In chapter 1, recall that we had defined a measure like function which we called Lebesgue outer measure. We had shown that this function is non negative, monotone, translation invariant with measures of the intervals equal to the lengths of the intervals and the nicest part of this Lebesgue outer measure was that we could define this Lebesgue outer measure for all subsets of real numbers. But there was a deficiency that we could only show that Lebesgue outer measure is countably sub additive but we could not show that it is countably additive. Actually, we could not also disprove it also. So, in this module what we are going to do is that with the help of the notion of measurable sets, we are going to define a set function which will become countably additive and so we can get a true measure. We start with our first slide. So, recall how we define the additivity or countable additivity of Lebesgue measure. For two disjoint sets A B of real numbers, we should have mu of A union B equal to mu A plus mu B. More precisely, mu should be countably additive that is we expect that if we take a sequence of pairwise disjoint sets A n, n belonging to capital N, then we must have mu of union n is equal to 1 to infinity A n is equal to sigma n is equal to 1 to infinity mu A n. Now, recall the definition of a Lebesgue measurable set let mu star be the Lebesgue outer measure on R. A set E subset of R is called Lebesgue measurable. If for any A subset of R we have mu star A is equal to mu star A intersection E plus mu star A intersection E complement. We know that the collection of all Lebesgue measurable sets form a sigma algebra. So, we now come to our first theorem of this module. Let mu star be the Lebesgue outer measure on R and let S be the collection of Lebesgue measurable sets. Then the restriction mu of mu star on S is a non negative countably additive set function with mu of phi equal to 0. From the definition of mu star, it is obvious that mu star is non negative and since mu is a restriction of mu star, so mu is also non negative. Also mu of phi equal to 0. So, we have to show that mu is countably additive. If a subset of R and n is a sequence of pairwise disjoint measurable sets, then recall that we had proved that mu star of A intersection union i is equal to 1 to infinity E i, this is equal to sigma i is equal to 1 to infinity mu star of a intersection E i. In this equality, let us put A is equal to union I is equal to 1 to infinity E i. And consequently, we get our desired result that mu star of union I is equal to 1 to infinity E i 
is equal to sigma i is equal to 1 to infinity b star e i. So, this shows that mu is countably additive, because since each e i is measurable and their union is also measurable, we can write mu instead of mu star. This set function mu is called the Lebesgue measure on R. We now discuss some basic properties of the Lebesgue measure. The first property is that the Lebesgue measure mu on R is monotone and subtractive. The proof is very easy and it is given in the course content. The second property which we can prove is that mu is countably additive. That is, if E n is a sequence of Lebesgue measurable sets and E is equal to union I is equal to 1 to infinity E i, then we should have mu of E is less or equal to sigma i is equal to 1 to infinity mu of E i. Here the sequence E n is not necessarily pairwise disjoint. Now we go to our next result, which we will be using in the later chapters. Let mu be the Lebesgue measure on R. Let E 1 subset of E 2 subset of E 3 be an increasing sequence of measurable sets. Then mu of limit n E n is equal to limit n tends to infinity mu of E n, where the limiting set E n that is limit n tends to infinity E n is defined as the union of all E n. That is, we are going to prove that if I have an increasing sequence of measurable sets, then the measure of their union is obtained as the limit or supremum of the monotonically increasing sequence of real numbers mu e n. And we say that the Lebesgue measure mu is continuous from above. So, let us see the proof. Let e 1 subset of e 2 subset of e 3 etcetera be an increasing sequence of measurable sets without any loss of generality. Let us put E 0 is equal to phi. Then mu of union i is equal to 1 to infinity E i. The union can be written in this form mu of union i is equal to 1 to infinity e i minus e i minus 1. That is we first take the set e 0, then e 1 minus e 0, then e 2 minus e 1, then e 3 minus e 2. So, that the sets become pairwise disjoint and we can then apply the countable additivity of the Lebesgue measure and we get the right hand side that this is equal to sigma i is equal to 1 to infinity mu of e i minus e i minus 1, but this is equal to limit n tends to infinity sigma i is equal to 1 to n mu of e i minus e i minus 1, because we know that the sum of an infinite series is the limit of the partial sums. But since these E i minus E i minus 1 are pairwise disjoint and the union of the first 
n sets is equal to E n. So, again by the additivity of Lebesgue measure, we have this sum is equal to mu of E n. So, on the right hand side we have limit n tends to infinity mu of E n. We now continue theorem 3 with another assertion. Let mu be the Lebesgue measure on R. Let E 1 contains E 2 contains E 3 be a decreasing sequence of measurable sets such that at least one E k has finite measure. Then also we will have the same property that mu of limit n tends to infinity E n equal to limit n tends to infinity mu E n, where the limiting set E n is defined as the intersection of the sets E n. So, again we have the same type of property that if I have a decreasing sequence of measurable sets, then their intersection will have the measure equal to the limit or infimum of the monotonically decreasing sequence of real numbers mu E n. We say that mu is continuous from above. Now, see the proof. So, without any loss of generality, let us assume that mu of E 1 is less than infinity. So, the first set has measure less than infinity. Now, mu of E 1 minus mu of intersection E n, if we consider this difference, then since the Lebesgue measure is subtractive, so this is equal to mu of E 1 minus intersection n equal to 1 to infinity E n and this is equal to mu of union n equal to 1 to infinity E 1 minus E n by De Morgan's law. Now, see that since the sequence E n is monotonically decreasing and each set is contained in the first set E 1. So, the difference sets E 1 minus E n is a monotonically increasing sequence. And we have already proved that the Lebesgue measure is continuous from below. So, this is equal to limit n tends to infinity mu of E 1 minus E n and again by subtractivity of the Lebesgue measure, we have limit n tends to infinity mu of E 1 minus mu of E n, but mu of E 1 is a constant. So, this is equal to mu of E 1 minus limit n tends to infinity mu of E n. Now, since mu of E 1 is a finite number, we can cancel it from both sides and we get the desired result. So, we are going to prove that the Lebesgue measure is monotone and subtractive and then we are going to prove that the Lebesgue measure is countably sub additive. So, we start with the first proof. We take two measurable sets A and B such that A is subset of B. Then the set B can be written as A union B minus A. Now, see that since A and B both are measurable, so B minus A is also measurable. And further, a and B minus A are pairwise disjoint. So, 
by the additivity of Lebesgue measure, we get mu of b equal to mu of a plus mu of b minus a. Now, since the measure cannot be negative, so mu of b minus a is greater or equal to 0. This means that mu b should be greater or equal to mu a and so the Lebesgue measure mu is monotone. Again see that from the equation that mu b equal to mu a plus mu b minus a, it readily follows that mu of b minus a equal to mu b minus mu a provided the number mu a is finite and this shows that the Lebesgue measure is also subtractive. Now, we start the brief proof of countable sub additivity of the Lebesgue measure. We start with a sequence of measurable sets E n. Let E be the union of all the sets E n that is union n equal to 1 to infinity E n. Now, the trick to prove the result is that we have to express the union as disjoint union of pairwise disjoint sets. For that what we do is that we take the set F 1 as E 1, then take the set E 2 minus E 1 and write it as F 2, then take the set E 3 minus E 1 union E 2 and write it as F 3. And in this way at the nth step we consider the set E n minus E 1 union E 2 union E n minus 1 and write it as F n. Now, see that since the set of Lebesgue measurable sets form a sigma algebra. So, at each step we get a measurable set and each F n is measurable. Since these new sets F n are pairwise disjoint, but their union is again the set E. So, by countable additivity of Lebesgue measure we get mu of E equal to sigma n equal to 1 to infinity mu of F n, but each F n is a subset of E n. So, mu F n is less or equal to mu E n for each n and so we have mu of E less or equal to sigma n equal to 1 to infinity mu E n and this proves our result.